Hi everyone, welcome to the inaugural edition of 15 Minutes in the Forest. I'm Jennifer Gagnon with the Forest Landowner Education Program at Virginia Tech and today I am joining you from my farm in Snowville, Virginia. If you don't know where Snowville is, um, it's in the southwest corner of Montgomery County. Floyd County is just across the river in that direction and Pulaski County is across the road in the other direction. So today I am going to talk to you about some early spring bloomers. And these plants are really, you know, not only are they harbingers of spring and better weather, but they're also a very important source of food for many of our native pollinators. And just a quick disclaimer, um, I am not an entomologist and I'm not a botanist and I will not be playing those roles in this video. I'm just going to show you some lovely flowers and share with you some little tidbits that I know about them. So I'm only gonna to talk to you about one tree today, um, and it's a tree that is almost impossible to ignore this time of year. It's the Eastern Redbud. Its scientific name is Circus canadensis, and it's in the pea family, so it's a legume. So when it has its fruits on it, there'll be long pods that look like peas. When these trees aren't blooming, they're pretty nondescript. They have simple, alternate heart-shaped leaves, which are very attractive, but it just tends to be a small understory tree that it's not terribly noticeable but this time of year when it's in full bloom it's really beautiful it has small pink uh, to reddish type flowers that grow right along the stem so it almost has a lichen like appearance and these flowers provide pollen for honeybees which I know are not a native pollinator but we still like them um, they also provide food for um, bumblebees mining bees they are host plants for a number of butterflies and moths and there is a leaf cutter bee that uses the leaves for nesting. So very important for those pollinators. In addition to that, they're also highly edible. So these flowers, you can eat them directly from the tree. Uh, this time of year, I have some fresh greens growing in the greenhouse, but you know, it's not a very exciting salad. So I add red bud flowers to the salad. Um, they make it beautiful and they also give it a nice nutty flavor. Later on in the year when these trees have their pods, those can be sauteed in butter for up to 10 minutes and, and eaten. Um, I have not tried those yet, but I intend to this summer. So redbud, just a lovely tree. I'll show you a little bit of footage um, with all the redbuds in our hardwood forest back behind me. Our next couple of species, I need to trek over to the river to, to show you those. Um, it'll only be a minute on your end, but it'll probably be about 15 minutes worth of walking on my end. So I'll be back with you shortly. Um, in the meantime, Enjoy some of the red buds that are blooming out here. Okay, well, I'm a little disappointed. The next species I was going to talk to you about is bloodroot, and it was blooming two days ago, but apparently it grew weary of waiting for me to come down and film it. So all I can show you now are the leaves of the bloodroot. Bloodroot is in the poppy family, and its scientific name is Sanguinaria canadensis. And it is an herbaceous ephemeral. So ephemerals are plant species that take advantage of that brief period of time in the spring uh, when the soil starts to warm up, but the overstory trees haven't leafed out yet, so there's still sunlight hitting the forest floor. Um, ephemerals take advantage of that brief period of time to flower, to produce seed, um, and to just fulfill their life cycle. And after that, they're gone for the rest of the year. Um, it is a perennial. It grows from rhizomes under the ground. And if you cut those rhizomes open, they exude a red latex substance, hence the name bloodroot. Um, these are good for pollinators. They're good for some small bees. Uh, but the one thing that they're really good for are ants. So the seeds of bloodroot have something called an eliasome on them. And the eliasome is attractive to ants. So ants come find them, they carry the seeds back to their nests, they eat the eliasome, but then they leave the seed there to germinate in the nest. So that's one of their reproductive strategies, that and the rhizomes underground. These are traditional medicinal plants. So if you do a search for them on Amazon, you're gonna get any number of supplements and tinctures made out of bloodroot. I am not recommending any of these to you. I'm just telling you what they have been used for. Um, it's supposed to be a powerful expectorant. So it's been used to treat asthma, bronchitis. It's also been used to treat skin cancer. But again, I'm not making recommendations on that. So another little species that we have right over here I'm gonna walk over to is trillium. 
Okay, so here is one of our trilliums in bloom. And trillium, um, there are up to 40 different species of trillium. And the Southern Appalachians actually has the highest diversity of trillium. So I will try to ID this one when I get back to the office. Uh, but for now, I'm going to just lump all the ones out here into trillium. Um, they are in the lily family. And they're also an herbaceous ephemeral perennial that grow from a rhizome like the bloodroot does. And they are very long-lived plants. Individual trilliums can live up to 25 years. And they get their name, trillium, tri, meaning three, from the fact that each flower has three leaves, three sepals. These are the green petal-looking structures around the flower petals themselves and three flower petals. So trillium meaning tri, so they're in threes. Um, individual species of trillium can have different colored flowers. So this one's pink, but certain species will have pink, red, yellow, um, white flowers. And so just looking at the color of flower is not a great way to determine which species of trillium it is. Okay, I had to travel down to some flatter ground so I could talk to you um, without sliding down the hillside. So the different pollinators that are attracted to a trillium, again, depend on the species. So there's some trillium species that have uh, dark red flowers and they emit an odor that's it's reminiscent of rotting flesh and those attract carrion flies to them. Um, other species of trillium attract things like bumblebees and honeybees and trilliums also have seeds with an eliasome. So again, they attract the ants that carry their seeds away and help them with the dispersal process. Trillium leaves are actually edible. So the young leaves can be added to salad raw, or they can actually be boiled. Um, the raw ones are supposed to have the taste similar to sunflower seeds. Now, some species of uh, trillium are threatened or endangered. So I don't recommend going out and digging up all of your trillium so you can eat the leaves. Uh, but there is one, there's a white flowered trillium that is real common in some places. So if you happen to have a patch of those and you wanna try them, uh, just make sure you're not eating one of the threatened or endangered species. I have one other species that's out here that I want to talk to you about, um, and it's a brand new one to me. I found it the other day when I was out here looking to see if the trilliums were blooming. I didn't know what it was, and I had to go back and look it up. Um, but it's a beautiful little flower, so I'm going to get to the vantage point where I can film some of those for you, um, and I'll be right back. Okay, so here's the species that was brand new to me. This is a bellwort. It's also called a Mary Bell or a bell flower. Um, and its scientific name is Uvularia, and there are five different common species of this. So I'm not exactly sure which this one is. I wanted to be able to come look a little bit closer, but I know that that is diagnostic with the stem going right through the base of the leaf like that. Uh, these are also in the lily family, herbaceous ephemeral perennials that spread by rhizomes. The flowers are really beautiful. That's why I noticed them the other day. They can be anywhere from pale to bright yellow. And of course, the bell flower name comes from the fact that the flowers are bell shaped. Uh, they're pollinated by bumblebees, sweat bees, and mining bees. And uh, they are also edible. So the, uh, the young shoots, you can remove the leaves and boil them for 10 minutes and uh, treat them just like you would asparagus. And I can only get this solitary plant because this is a very steep hillside and I keep sliding down towards the river. I don't want to lose anything in the river. Uh, but I did want to show you some other ones that are growing. There's some bigger plants. So there's another one there. And there's a couple on the back side of that log as well. So there's quite a few of them up on this hillside. And I would be remiss being out here and not pointing out to you this little guy. This is a uh, fire pink. And another spring flower, but these actually start blooming early and they bloom well into the summer. And the main pollinator for the fire pinks is the ruby-throated hummingbird, and uh, they are returning to our area right now. Okay, well, I am going to try to get off of this hillside without uh, putting a lot of soil in the river or putting myself in the river. I do have one more species I want to show you. It's a Virginia bluebell and it's growing down at the end of my road. So I'm gonna have to hike back out, get in the car and drive down to the end of the street. But again, for you, it'll just be a second. Uh, for me, it'll be about half an hour. So I will see you shortly. 
I thought before I left I'd just give you an idea of what this whole hillside looks like. So there's all the yellow Mary Bells up there. And you can see the leaves from the bloodroot and a bunch more of the trilliums. It's really a very beautiful part of the property. Most people enjoy it from the river. Just had a couple of kayakers go past. I think they were a little surprised to see me out here. There's the river. A little fire pink up there on the hillside and the Mary Bells. I am no longer on my property, but as you can see, social distancing out here is still not really an issue. That's my car. Pretty much nothing else out here. I'm about a half a mile up the river from where I last was. And we have reached the last species that I want to talk about today. And there are a ton of them out here. All those little blue flowers that you see, those are Virginia bluebells, also known as Roanoke bells. And their scientific name is Mertensia virginica, and they are in the forget-me-not family. Uh, these are some more herbaceous ephemeral perennials. Uh, they have simple alternate leaves, go up their stems. And the flowers are cool. Um, they are tubular at the base, and as they get closer to the edge, they become more bell-like. In terms of butter of uh, uh, pollinators, butterflies are the most common pollinator. Um, they can easily perch on the edge of the flowers and reach down to get the pollen. But they're also visited by bees like bumblebees, honeybees, and mason bees. And they're visited by skipper moths, a giant bee fly, and a hummingbird moth. And this may not surprise you based on what I've talked about today, but Virginia bluebells are edible. The flowers can be added fresh to salads, which is something I'm going to try tonight. And the flowers and the leaves can also be stir fried and eaten. Another nice thing about these bluebells is that they spread and take over an area pretty quickly. And so they're a nice native that you can add to a partially shaded flower bed. Uh, just put a few plants over there. They transplant and you can just watch them spread on their own and fill in a shady flower bed. Thank you so much for spending 15 minutes in the forest with me. I hope you join us again next Friday at noon. My colleague Adam Downing with Virginia Cooperative Extension and our colleague Charlie Becker with the Virginia Department of Forestry will be teaching you how to inoculate logs with shiitake mushroom spores so you can grow your own mushroom logs at home. Thanks so much and have a great weekend.